So one of the bigger problems that we find as communicators during crisis communication events is that sometimes there's a lack of trust between um, on, on multi levels, but definitely between leadership and their public information officer and then also the public information officer and anywhere where they are gathering their information. And uh, that can be from leadership that can be from um, other co workers it can be from external sources and it can be from internal sources. So one of the most important things that uh, that you can do is develop a strong relationship and a good level of trust with whoever the communicator is for your organization. There's a common misconception that your public information officer or your public affairs officer, whoever your person is that's directing communications from your organization, both internally and externally, that that individual is a motor mouth and will share all of your secrets and that their intent is to take every piece of information they have and distribute it to anyone and everyone. And then this, this misconception is further exacerbated because um, the, uh, the fear that your public information officer will share that information with the media and make your organization look bad or potentially get information out to the public sooner than it should be will be there. That is not the role of your public information officer. Uh, your public information officer is there to tell the story of your organization. They're there to protect the reputation of your organization. And yes, they are there to share information with the public, uh, but they're not able to plan and do that effectively if they don't have information in a timely manner. Uh, that being said, that level of trust has to be built and it's not gonna be built overnight, but it definitely needs to be built before there's a crisis. One of the best things that you can do if you are a leader is to have an open dialogue with your public information officer. Uh, ask them what it is that they are doing. Ask them what their goals for the organization are. And then more importantly, ask them what they need. A lot of times, uh, even, though that, even though your public information officer is a member of the command staff, there's a feeling that you're kind of off on your own. And then sometimes you'll find in some organizations that the public information officer did not originate from the type of organization you are. So for example, you might find people uh, who are public information officers and in emergency management organizations who feel a little left out because maybe they began their career, career in journalism or mass communications and, and they don't feel like they're part of the emergency management club. Um, you find this quite a bit in health related professions as well where you feel that the, the communicator uh, might feel like they're not really part of a team because they're not a healthcare professional. And even though we all know that's not the case, those feelings are still there. And that can bar um, the relationship between uh, the public information officer and their senior leadership. And it can help make that trust a hard place to get to, that trust level that you need to have to have the most effective type of communication for your organization. There's probably always going to be a fear of management that, uh, that they might get a public information officer who does have some type of malicious intent uh, towards their organization. Perhaps that, that individual uh, does not know how to safeguard information. And that again is where relationships come into play. Um, if, if you as a, as a leader or as a senior manager are engaging with your PIO on a regular basis and learning what makes that person tick and what drives that person and if you're engaged in their communication strategy, it will be apparent to you as a leader that your, your PIO is either working for the organization or working for themselves. That gives you a little bit of leverage as, as a manager of a public information officer um, to know what you need, what changes you need to make, what parameters you need to set, and what you need to do to build that relationship to a level where you do trust that your public information officer can have access to all of your information uh, and spread it appropriately. And then for other people in the organization who are sources of information for your PIO, those people need to have a relationship and a level of trust as well. A lot of people in particular who, have, who are program and project managers, they have information that doesn't need to be um, accessible to the general public or perhaps doesn't need to be accessible to the general public right now, but certainly is going to have a, a place in the public um, in the future. And so you've got to have a relationship and a level of trust with your PIO that when you give them that information, they're going to take the information that they have, uh, store it away, care for it, 
as, as in the same manner that that project manager and any of their staff would, and then be prepared to present that information to the public or to an internal audience uh, when necessary. But it, they're not going to be able to do that if they don't have that information ahead of time, if they're not able to prepare and process it, ask questions, and become knowledgeable enough to be a trusted source of information on the subject. So another thing that, that people need to understand is that your PIO is the authoritative, authoritative uh, information source for your organization. So that person has got to sound like they're credible. They've got to sound like they know what they're talking about. Uh, but really more importantly, they don't just need to sound as if they know what they're talking about. They need to actually have a working knowledge of whatever subject they're discussing. This helps uh, build the reputation of your organization. It helps the external audiences in particular, and of course the public audiences truly understand uh, that the person who is speaking on behalf of your organization not only understands the information, but cares enough about the public to share that information. One thing that a lot of people who are not PIOs have a fear of is what is going to happen when you do have bad news and you have to share it with people. Uh, you are going to have bad news from time to time. Things are not always uh, clear blue and 22 and beautiful and bright and happy. And that being the case, your PIO is going to have to share bad news from time to time. Once again, this is where it's important for your PIO to have that information as quickly as they can. If you're able to foster an environment where you're facilitating the seamless transfer of information uh, to and from your PIO, to and from both the people who are delivering information and then of course the people who are receiving information, even when it's bad news, that bad news will be softened some by the fact that there's a relationship there and that you're a trusted organization that communicates transparently with the public. Regardless of your position uh, within the organization, you're, you should always think about making sure that your public information officer, that your PIO, has a seat at the table. Um, again, your PIO is not sitting there to eavesdrop uh, so that they have all the information so that they can run around and share it. But your PIO really operates best as, as a sponge that is almost oversaturated. Having all of those various pieces of information lets your PIO put together the pieces of the puzzle um, that, that is required to fully show the story of what your organization is, what they do, who they are, what your people are, why you're there, why you're serving the public. Um, th those things can really only come about when the PIO has that seat at the table, when they are invited to meetings, and when you really think about them as a member of every single team. So what that looks like is when, even when you're talking about the most mundane thing in your organization, somewhere in your top five thoughts, you should think, does the PIO know about this? Should the PIO know about this? And the answer is probably generally yes. Uh, your PIO can be a great source of, of information and assistance to you in just about any project. Uh, think of them as kind of a creative reference that can sit there and maybe help you brainstorm. And there will be times within your organization when your PIO wants to publicize something that you just want to keep private. Again, here we are with relationships. You're going to have to talk to your PIO about that and explain to them why this particular uh, piece of information does not need to go out to the public or why it doesn't need to go out to the public right now. And um, we've had some projects uh, here in the state of Arkansas in the emergency management world that just weren't going to be open to everyone. So rather than broadly publicize those, uh, we let them be publicized more at the local level and, uh, and more just throughout the community. And the reason for that was because we knew that, that the state was gonna be limited in the type of funds that they got. And so, um, you know, publicizing those funds and then also saying that you can't have this really wouldn't have been a good, uh, uh, really wouldn't have been a good uh, effort on our half to, uh, to help people. So rather what we focused on was publicizing various other grants that more people could apply for that there were things that they could do. So, um, you know, again, keeping things private, that might not exactly be the best terminology, um, but you don't always have to publicize everything broadly. And you need to be able to tell your PIO that something doesn't need to be broadcast as widely as possible, and you need to be able to tell them why. And the flip side of that coin is, is that sometimes you're gonna have a project that does need to be broadcast to the widest audience possible, uh, and you may not want to do that for whatever reason. You've got to be willing as a team member to listen to your PIO explain to you um, why it is a good idea 
perhaps for that information to be shared. And then of course, at the end of the day, it's senior leadership's decision what information is and is not shared, but it takes everyone working together as a team to figure out exactly what needs to be said when and by whom. Mm -hmm.